Before this video starts, let me warn you that I was feeling pretty sick during this one, and it apparently affected me a lot more than I thought it did. My voice sounds horrible, and uh, I don't really do a quite as much as I wanted to. However, I still get a bunch done, and we're well on our way towards getting better circuits. We also set up a lot of infrastructure in this episode, so if you want to see all that, and specifically how certain mechanics in Greg Tech and Omnifactory particularly work, this is a great episode for you. However, if you don't really care about that, you can probably skip this one and not lose any substance. But, with that said, hey, look, there's a little bit of a future base here. Also, you notice I have a jetpack. If you have keen eyes and continue watching this series, you might be able to see quite how far ahead in recording I am. However, you know, it might take a, a couple weeks before I catch up in uploading the videos. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video, and on with the show. Hello everybody, this is Andy, and welcome to another episode of Omnifactory. I believe this is episode 8, and don't mind me, I'm just processing some salt, because we need salt for salt water, and we need salt water to make chlorine, and we need chlorine to make polyvinyl chloride, except that's not the right step, this is the right step. And I think our ethylene production is doing well, let's go check on that really quick. We seem to be pretty happy right here. I'm using a bit of ethylene right now because I'm creating a fair bit of polyethylene because I need more and more polyethylene for this because I'm using that polyethylene over here where I was making circuit boards before. As you can see, this thing is at around 1900 and that's not amazing. So I added a second chemical reactor and that should double the rate at which this thing produces. The problem is I let this thing run for approximately six hours and it only produced about 1800 of them. So that's not really at the rate that we want it. Considering this world is not on a server yet so that won't run full time, I literally just left my game on all night. However, I do want to check on one more thing. We are inching up on the aluminum uh, threshold for turning this machine off, which is pretty cool. So we will have a little bit of power freed up. Not like that's a problem for us, but um, we'll have some power freed up. So let's go ahead and start setting things up. We're going to need this. I have the ethylene. I need the chlorine. Chlorine is made in an electrolyzer with salt water. We're going to need to make chlorine and salt water. So let's start with salt water first. These centrifuges will be gone as soon as this process finishes up. I have finally finished crushing all my salt. I just need to centrifuge it. And then um, I'm going to need to craft up this borax because there is a ton of it. And I don't need that clogging up my Miami system. However, let's start setting up the salt water. Um, I made an export bus because I need one of those. Hello, may I have my export bus please? Thank you. Uh, I'm going to run that to the side right here and we're going to export. Can I have salt please? Please? Thank you. And salt will go into here. Perfect. And then I just need to use one of my ender tanks and throw water in there. And it begins creating salt water very, very fast. And I should just to be able to, you know what, I might put a storage bus directly on this guy, hold on. Actually, I don't think that's worth my time. I'm just gonna use ender fluid conduits and pump the salt water that this thing creates directly into the electrolyzers. So, I'm gonna have to set that up. And just like that, we are set up. Well, kind of. Um, I am voiding the hydrogen right here. I don't really have any use for it. And right here, I want to put the sulfur in, or not the sulfur, the chlorine in, which means I'm gonna need a bucket. And if I just throw a fluid filter in here, throw the chlorine bucket in there, and turn it to insert on blue, I should begin getting a ton of chlorine. Now, I can just fluid storage bust this and send it wherever I want it to. So now we have the chlorine, we need to make the vinyl chloride, which means I'm going to need more chemical reactors, so, let me grab, let's say, is this long? No. Let's grab two chemical reactors. I forgot to say, this also creates an item, the sodium hydroxide, which will probably come in handy, so I'm going to store a ton of it. However, I am going to void upgrade it, so we will produce chlorine for approximately the rest of time. Well, until I run out of salt, that is, which should be a while from now. This process is decently slow, however, we're building a backlog fairly quickly, so we should be good there. And it looks like, for the most part, I have filled up this bad boy. Um, 
I could fit technically like one more machine right here. I don't think that's going to happen. So let's start with another MV line. And instead of doing this the way that I have been doing it, I'm going to do it the way the quest book suggests, which is use a fluid interface and then pipe out of this. So I'm going to need to connect this bad boy up. And here we are. I set up the conduits, so we are now extracting fully. Um, I didn't set any filters because I want 64 of both ethylene and chlorine in both of these bad boys at any given time. Um, I am going to actually want to extract from these guys. Yep. Oh, and it's a fast reaction too. That's awesome. Um, I am going to want to extract from these guys into a tank. And hydrochloric acid, I think, is something I might want to keep. Looking at it just a little bit, hydrochloric acid is, one, going to be useful in making, I think, this epichlorohydrin stuff, which is used to make epoxy resin. So let's keep the hydrochloric acid, and let's also think about maybe reprocessing it into more chlorine. I think I'm going to use these basic quantum tanks. The concept of me ever getting 64,000 buckets of one of these guys is basically ludicrous. However, let's play it safe and also give a fluid trash can set to a low priority just just in case we get a lot. Oh, and these are guys are done. Okay, here we go. Let me just cover it up, and this thing is pretty much set up. I have vinyl chloride in this one, hydrochloric acid in this one, and a bad, bad fluid trash can right there. Um, for the moment, this thing is essentially going to run forever. This thing isn't even 1% full yet, I don't think. Um... So I might have to come over here and disable working on some of these machines because they're working a little bit too quick for the rest of my systems. And ethylene is something that I do need elsewhere, so hopefully it doesn't all get sucked up by this bad boy. In the future, if this isn't working out, I might just need to amp up my ethylene production like tenfold and call it a day because that might be the only way to fix this problem without changing these to like buffer tanks. And here we are, all connected up to the system, nice and good, fluid storage buses that are nice and partitioned. Now, let's take an advanced chemical reactor and export both of these bad boys with a capacity card, and I should be able to create, fairly simply, this polyvinyl chloride. I'm going to need to fluid extract that into the, or not fluid extract, fluid solidify into the sheets for use, because they're not really used in any other real way but you know okay i've just made our fluid solidifier and it looks like this bad boy isn't going for some reason completely my fault i didn't put in the integrated circuit and now it goes and now let's just go ahead and store this stuff in a drawer with those two upgrades and i need to export this guy right like that and auto export perfect now let's lock you and we'll put a storage bus on this guy and right there is the polyvinyl chloride sheets done this thing is going to take a couple million years to back up completely but i think that's fine it's not using that much vinyl chloride per little like piece of this so i'm not super concerned um next step well, more like the next step and the last step, I need to gather up the last couple of things I need to make all of these bad boys. So I can make that pretty easily. Um, I need to set up a system that will automatically craft these wafers into the CPUs and RAM, and pretty much everything else it looks like I can already make pretty comfortably. So the last two things that I need is going to be carbon and gallium. I don't know how to get gallium, so let's find out. I looked through the recipes for a little bit. I actually do know exactly how to get gallium, and we are we actually have a little bit. Let's check the ME system, and you'll see that I have around 300 pieces. This stuff is used in the blast furnace to make these silicon bools, which I am making constantly. So I have 200 right now. Um, so what I need to do is I need to centrifuge some processed zinc ore. So let's go ahead and buy some zinc. Ooh, can I not buy zinc? How about sphalerite? Can I buy sphalerite? I can. Perfect. Let's buy... Oh. Apparently we will buy one stack of sphalerite and a bunch of magnetite as well. Um, <laughs> oops. Let's go process this. And it should just be macerated, right? Yeah. So, while I was waiting for all of that gallium to process up, 
I looked at all the recipes for carbon, or well, I looked at this one, and I decided this is definitely the one that I'm using. So let's go and set up a couple of centrifuges. I think I might, I still have centrifuges, right? I can just take like two of these maybe, and some drawers, and I should just be able to set this up. And here is my little centrifuge that will work hard for the rest of time because I'm voiding this and also voiding this. So this machine is literally on eternally. Sorry, bud. However, if I storage bust this bad boy, which I just made, and I can go over here and grab the... Oh, wow. Thank you. I should have everything that I need to begin auto-crafting better circuits. Well... Um, I'm still processing down the gallium a little bit, but after that, we'll have everything we need. So, I've just spent a moment setting a couple things up. First of all, I have set up three new assemblers. Those assemblers are going to be used to make all of these bad boys. And I set up another precision laser engraver so I can begin to export the silicon bulls directly into them and not have any problems creating like these integrated circuits or the RAM wafers or anything like that. So, let me grab some wafers, right? No. Uh, silicon bools yes these guys and they just go in the export bus into both of these they both have different lenses in them which means they'll do different work right why aren't you working don't worry i'm just stupid and was right the first time we need silicon wafers in these guys not the other way around i need more cutting machines because i need to cut silicon bool so i need one more cutting machine to cut the silicon bulls full time and i don't exactly have a place to put them here now do i oh wait right here perfect cutting machine coming up okay that bad boy is set up and the way i'm going to handle importing these items since there is no way to like automatically import them because this is using an export bus i'm just going to add an interface on each side over here allow it to not be seen on the system and then throw the items into it. So let me make sure I can figure these all correctly and I'll be right back and we can get started on something else that I realize we actually need, annealed copper, which means we need a new blast furnace. I went ahead and added the wafers and the integrated circuits and the RAM to my drawer wall because I don't really wanna overdo it on these. Uh, my ME system is still using 1K drives, so let's, uh, let's prolong its lifespan as long as possible. Remember how I said there was no way a machine was going to fit in this one block space? Well, I found one. Uh, I needed another cutting machine because I used all my other ones up for like the uh, on de or the uh, passive crafting recipes, and I need an on-demand one for like a couple of things. So that lives there now. Oh, I should spray paint it really quickly so everything is nice and uniform. Oh, these guys need to be spray painted too. My next big dilemma is: Do we keep putting blast furnaces here? Or do we move them somewhere else? Because I've kind of reached the end of this room. Like, there's not enough room here for another blast furnace. So, do I expand it? I can't put them here because I'm going to put more of these here. So, that's not going to work. Um, I have this other MV line in here that's not being used for anything right now. Maybe this could be just a kind of a blast furnace thing. Would that be okay? How, how far out would that go? That would go to here. That's enough walking room. Yeah, I'm gonna put blast furnaces here for the time being. Fluid input, normal input, output. And with a couple of these bad boys, the structure should form. Okay, perfect. Now, all I have to do is, well, shove a bunch of copper in there, one, but two, start up oxygen production again because I, I kinda accidentally stopped producing oxygen. Um, well, let's do this again. I went ahead and set up four electrolyzers right here so we can get water. This should, or not a water, we already have water. We're using water to get oxygen, and these guys should produce fast enough that we shouldn't really have to worry about oxygen that much. Um, it's probably gonna deplete pretty quickly once I start running this blast furnace. However, I'm not gonna backlog a ton of annealed copper. Um, I think I might just do like 100 or 200 pieces and then turn it off with the machine controller so we don't have to stress out about making this production super, super robust, uh, even though it's pretty good right now. So let's set up this blast furnace and then we'll probably end it off for the day. I'm going to input using an interface set on don't show. I'm going to do fluid with a fluid 
export and normal items with a normal item export bus. I really, my brain is just not working today. I'm going to need some copper so I can export into this ULV hatch thingy. And there we go. I'll just throw that in there if I can sneak it in. No, I can't. Um, and then I can set this to oxygen. I don't have oxygen storage bus yet. So I'm going to have to do that and then export into there. So let me make a storage bus really quickly. Slap this bad boy right on there. And we should see the oxygen begin to or, uh, input. Okay, perfect. The oxygen is working. Now I just need to set up controls for this guy. Are you going to actually function? When is this going to be ready? Come on, two more. Okay, looks like he's going, and look how fast that is. It's so quick, I don't need to, I could honestly do this process on demand if I wanted to. However, uh, I'm not a huge fan of on-demand crafting, so I'm just going to keep a bunch stored. And since I haven't shown you how to use these machine controllers yet, let's go ahead and do that. So I put the machine controller there. The level emitter, I believe, has to go exactly here or it won't work. Um, since I'm placing it on the top of this block, this block needs to get redstone power from this block. So this block should be this thing when it's on emits a strong redstone signal to here. You can see power 15 up here. Um, however, I don't want it to stop this thing from working just yet, so I need to put annealed copper in there, and let's make 200 of it. Why don't we? And it begins working again. So once there's 200 annealed copper in the ME system, the thing will just straight up stop, and that is perfectly fine with me. How are we doing on oxygen, actually? I think we're using it faster than we're producing it. However, that's okay. That's fine. We're going to let this pass... We're going to let this craft passively in the background in between episodes, and everything is going to be fine and dandy. Also, hopefully, I can get this place down here looking a little bit better in between episodes because, ugh, compared to up here, it looks terrible, and up here doesn't even look that good. I need to do the roof and the walls still. However, I haven't really gotten around to it because I've been so focused on progressing. Um... But yeah, I think that's everything I've got for today. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, maybe leave a like or something. I don't know. Something like that would be pretty darn cool. But either way, have a fantastic day, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.